down in two cars tonight. I bought down my 635 CSI and a friend of mine's bought down my 340i Touring. The 635, that's been in the family now for about close to 32 years. It was my father's and I took it off him a few years back. And the 340i, I've had that now about 18 months. 14 years ago, stripped it down, bit of paint work, well, had a full respray few remedial repairs, they always rust, so a couple of rust spots sorted out. Just gave it mechanical overhaul, suspension, lowered it at the same time, then top and tail the engine. Just to give it a refresh, there's nothing drastically wrong with it, but it just made sense. I've put on the ACT three-piece split rims, lowered the suspension, and that's it in terms of performance modifications, if you want to call them that. Added the deeper air down from the M635 onto the car. Retrimmed the whole lot, added some period correct Recaro classics and I had an audio upgrade done by a company in Southampton, Studio in Car. 340i Touring. It was always my plans to get one and I knew exactly what I was going to do to it, having previously owned an E91 335i. That had a load of work done it by Birds, Birds Performance over in Iver. So once I got the 340i, first thing I did was ditch the run flats, put on some Michelin Pilot Sport tyres, and then a few months later went over to Birds. What Birds do, they offer a very bespoke suspension setup. It's performance orientated, but at the same time it rides well on the road, so there's no real compromise there. We had a limit slip differential, and they've done it, given it a bespoke tune. It's about 320, 330 horsepower, depends which dyno it sits on. It's not all about performance, it's about enjoying the car, getting the power down, and it just performs well. Um, it's a bit of a sleeper, no one really expects it, and it's just a good all-round car. It's a tough decision which car to drive. The 340i is my daily, and it's a great daily. Um, weather permitting, some, it's, choices like you take the E24, if you've got a nice day, you take it. If I want to be a beast or a hooligan, I just jump in the touring. It's just too much fun. I just want to fancy a chilled cruise up the West End or out in the sticks like we are today. E24 makes a lot of sense. Today I actually drove the E24 up. My friend Dave drove up the Touring. But on the way home, where the road's going to be a lot quieter, I'll be taking the 340 and giving it a load of shit. <laughs> First BMW was an E30 and they were still current, you know, at the time. Uh, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, so I had an E30 and uh, had three of those. And... Yeah, just sort of progressed from there to E36s, uh, E46, uh, and then, you know, ended up in the, well, one series, then two series, went down this road. My name's Andy, uh, I drive a BMW M2 competition, and I've only just bought it three, four months ago, so it's a new purchase. Before this, I had another M2, but a non-competition, so I'm a, yeah, a bit of a two series fan. Um, and before that, I had an M235, so, three two series back to back. I bought this one because it's like my last chance to get a brand new two series while they were still making them. Uh, I like the look of it. Uh, I think they're quite aggressive. And um, yeah, looking at some of the newer stuff that's coming out, I was a bit worried that the new two series might not be as pretty. So I thought I'll get a brand new one before they stop making them. It's a S55 engined two series and it's uh, running about 410 PS. Um, it's quite a fully loaded car, uh, all the carbon packs on it as well. Uh, all optional extras, including sunroof, um, reversing cameras, heated seats, well, yeah, pretty much everything you could get. I've done one modification that's not factory. Um, I've changed the rear flat box. Uh, they come quite quiet from factory now, so all the new cars have these uh, new EU regs and they're very quiet, so I thought I'll put something with a bit more grumble, so it's got a Remus uh, axle back exhaust. I've only just finished running her in about a month ago, and uh, I've only had a couple of chances to open up the taps, and uh, 
yeah, the speed is quite violent. My name's John, uh, driver E92 M3. Um, I've owned it for nearly a year now. I had the E46 before, which was getting a bit old and a bit tired. And then this came up and I was lucky enough to have the, have the money to buy it. Um, it's the last naturally aspirated one, it's V8. It's a competition pack. So the only thing I've done is put the splitters on, um, carbon boot spoiler and M performance steering wheel. Um, other than that, it's completely standard. Going back a bit, first BMW I had probably around about 2000, year 2000. Um, had a E30 and a 325 Sport and it's kind of been hooked ever since really. I've had oh, E30 M3 I had, um, E46 uh, 330, E36 M3, E46 M3 and now this. <laughs> the E30 M3 was a great car, um, it was quite basic left-hand drive and I only had the one car at the time so it was a bit of hard work using it every day. Um, obviously now looking back I wish I'd kept it because they they go for silly money now. <laughs>
uh, but the main modifications I did in the last few months. So it had the M50 manifold swap to get the engine breathing better because they were heavily restricted from new. And to really get the benefit out of that, I recently had some Just Deutsch cams put on it, um, then got it live mapped and it's now pushing about 240 brake. Uh, the rev limit has lifted to 7,000, so it breathes properly now and it, it really screams. You get above 5,000 RPM and it, it really goes now. Whereas before you were changing up at four and a half thousand and there wasn't much point holding on anymore. But now, yeah, it's a, it's a proper screamer now. I mean, it's not M performance. It would need an S50 exhaust to really get it up to sort of 260, but that's big money. So I'm not sure that's maybe for next year, might try and push it a bit, bit higher. Because I know there are so few in good conditions, most of them get the gearboxes ripped out for, you know, drifting and, you know, they end up rusty and then it's just not worth the cost to repair them. But now the values are creeping up on them. I'm putting money into it because I think these are going to go like E30s went a couple of years ago and they're going to be worth, even with a few miles, they're going to be desirable cars. They'll be worth a few quid, basically. Hi, I'm Silas. This is my M3 CSL. I bought it in 2013. I've already got an E30 M3, I've got an Evo, an Evo 2 and um, always had a soft spot for a CSL. Test drove one when they came out in 2003 and I thought one day I'll have one and you know what happens, it just, it fell into my lap. A friend of a friend knew of somebody that had one, it'd been lying around, I got it basically. Um, I was only supposed to have it six months and sell it on, eight years later it's still here. So I've got a full AP brake setup, which I thought um, much better than the standard brakes. I've got a Larini back box, makes a nice noise. And just, um, I've got some wheel spacers, 15 and 12 mil. Just gives it more of an aggressive look. Uh, and I feel that's where the wheels kind of should have been. Um, and that's, that's it, bar that everything else is still stock. It just makes me feel special. I love it. It's just the noise. I like the fact that it's a little bit different as well. Um, I, like the, well I like also that it's limited numbered. My understanding of it is that there were 422 cars that were allocated to the UK. I don't know the proportion of silver grey and sapphire black, but that's what the allocation of right-hand drives were to the UK. And um, they were massively overpriced when they came out and then they weren't selling. So a lot of them at the time, the prices were quite significantly reduced. But um, as I say, yeah, I, I love the car. It's just the noise it makes. It's, uh, it's addictive. <laughs>